Here are five steps all beginners should do before they start. One of the first things we want to do to save time, each time you launch Corel Video Studio, you most likely get into this greeting here or this welcome window. And we want to eliminate that. We want to go straight into the edit tab every time we launch it. To do that is very simple. Go into settings, preferences, just stay in the general tab. And over here, it says default startup page and then choose edit. So every time you launch Corel Video Studio, you will automatically go straight into the edit tab and that will save you some time. Step number two is fitting your photo or your video to project size. And what I mean by that now, if I grab this photo and I drop it on the timeline, I got black borders and I want to eliminate that. I can do that by simply highlighting that clip, then right clicking on the preview window and then go to fit the screen or something similar. But I want Corel Video Studio to do that automatically each time I insert a video or a picture. So let's do that. Let's go up to here, settings, preferences, go straight into the edit tab and you can tick this use fit to screen as a default. So anytime you put a video track in the overlay or a picture, it automatically will fit to screen. You can also go down to here where it says keep aspect ratio. Now this is for only for the images. Every time you insert an image, if you check this one, keep aspect ratio with no letterbox, click that, press OK. Let's do the same thing. Let's take that clip out and then reinsert that clip and look what happens. See so it automatically fits just to the project size. Now you can still right click and then say keep whatever you want. Let's say default size or you want to keep the aspect ratio. It automatically does everything for you rather than you constantly have to doing this movement here. The next step is we're going to streamline Corel Video Studio so it can work better with your system, especially if you have a low spec computer. Now watch this, when you when you first launch 2023, you're gonna see this little orange scrubber bar. And as you can see in my preview window, it's also playing. Now, what happens is you're already starting to tap in on the resources of your CPU, and that starts to be a strain on the system. So I would recommend to eliminate that immediately. Secondly, also here, if I start to just pull this scrubber, well, the zap, whatever it is, it, it, can, can, it doesn't matter. You can hear the audio also playing, and I wish to eliminate both those because, again, they do require more resources. Let's go into settings, preferences, stay in the general tab, enable timeline preview. No, that's the orange one that we saw. Let's eliminate that. Let's go into the edit tab enable audio while scrubbing no let's eliminate that now while we're here we're also going to have a look at something else resampling quality anything that's in the preview windows of what quality do you wish that to have well you got good better and best i'd highly recommend to stay with good if you do wish to see a preview of higher quality i'll show you how we can do that press ok now we're in here i want to play this video here but it's on good and i don't think the quality is good uh, like the visual appearance doesn't look sharp. How will I render it out and how will it look? Very simple. I can use the HD option, which basically puts it in high definition. And whatever I see in the preview is exactly what will happen when I render out the video. The fourth step is just changing the layout of my desktop. In other words, I want to make it more user friendly for myself. Now, if you're using 2023, you can click on this customized toolbar here you have an option that says select all. I would highly recommend to select all. And the reason is some of these tools you're gonna to be using quite often, like say voiceover or snapshot. If you are a beginner and this is the first time you're being introduced to the Corel videos, you're gonna be looking around for it. So here it is now, the snapshot. If it wasn't there, you'd be going, well, where is it? it, it well, it's in the edit tab and the snapshot's here. Same with the voiceover, it would be in here. There's the voiceover. And if you're a beginner, you probably wouldn't even know it existed there and you're wasting time looking for it. So, hey, check it all and it's all neatly presented in your toolbar here. The second thing I would do, if you are coming from another non-linear editing software, the layout is, is going to be different. Your layout is probably more like this, where the preview window is on the other side. And I'm going to show you how I did that. It's very simple. You see there's all these little dots up here. I can click on that and drag it. Once I drag that, these little blue arrows will pop up and I can just highlight that blue or place it there. And now I've shifted the preview window to the other side. And that's probably more what I'm used to if I come from another non-linear editing software. If I want to keep this as a permanent setting, I can go say settings here. I can do the layout and it gives me switch to 
or it's how to save it. So basically it says if you press Alt 1, I can save this as a custom. And then all I need to do every time I want to use the custom setting, I just press Control 1. And that's exactly how I did it when I moved my, my previous screen to the other side. And always F7 is going back to default. The last step I'm going to show you is called Ripple Edit. And what is Ripple Edit? Well, if I was to, to delete this track, I want everything to go in unison. So, for example, I've only highlighted this track and the main track to be Ripple Edit. So, in other words, this one will stay here. So, let's remove that and see how this track moved, but this one stayed behind. So, now you're out of alignment. So, if you're doing a big project and you make a one little adjustment, you have to go through the whole project manually and realign everything and that's going to be a waste of time so instead we can activate the ripple edit and i'm going to show you how and best way to do it let's go up here i'm going to un sorry i'm going to unhighlight this this i'm going to sh actually i'll show you this way first you can simply just manually click everything that's blue but that is the really long way to do it okay let's do it this way see this little arrow key down open that I've got enable ripple edit. If it isn't, it's blue. Let's go back to enable ripple edit. So now I've got it blue and I'm going to select all. Now every track is highlighted. If you do it manually like I did before, chances are you're going to miss one or two and that's going to really mess with your project. Anytime you want to do something slightly unique and you don't need the ripple edit, that's fine. Just click that one once and if you want to engage it again, click it again and it's all engaged so you don't have to sit there and every time start clicking one on one on one off this is a much faster process ripple edit it's going to be a huge time saver for you and as always thanks for watching